and we're bottled in. Got my ticket, got my ticket. There's no turning back now. <laughs> we're gonna be even faster when the hair's gone. <laughs> Streamlined, aerodynamic. Touchdown in Istanbul. I'm gonna collect my bag. Hopefully there's someone waiting for me because I've done this all through WhatsApp which I'm gonna give you a rundown of soon. Not paid for it yet. So fingers crossed there's someone there waiting to pick me up and take me to the hotel. Fingers crossed. Bus, bus time is gonna be waiting there. Just spoke to them on the phone. We're gonna floor minus two and we're gonna find it. Pillar seven apparently we're gonna find our taxi. Then I'm going to the hospital tonight to get some bloods, ECG, and a PCR test to make sure I'm all good for Wednesday. Oh, lovely, some great viewing. We've been picked up by now here time. We're now on our way to the hospital to get my bloods, ECG, and COVID test, PCR test before Wednesday. Day off tomorrow to do some exploring of Istanbul. Then Wednesday's the transplant. Look at this car though. Lovely Mercedes. Drinks, some, s some snacks as well. Unbelievable. So we've just arrived at the hospital. Feel a bit car sick after a man was rallying like an F1 driver. We did a two hour journey in one hour. So it's 7.40 a.m. here in Istanbul and I'm sweating my pan in. Number one reason, I'm in the pool area. So it's absolutely boiling. Just finished the gym session, half an hour. I thought my last gym session was gonna be at home, but of course the five-star hotel has a five-star gym. So 30 minute blast. And maybe I might get one in tomorrow on Wednesday the 9th, before the day of the operation or the surgery, the transplant. Depends what time I go at. I'm either going to go at 8 a.m. or 12 midday, so we'll see. Either way, it doesn't really make much of a difference, but it always feels good to get a workout. I'm not going to be able to do one for four weeks, so yeah, it's going to be a while. Uh, last night was good. I picked up in this amazing car. We got driven straight to the hospital where they did my bloods, ECG, heart scan, and PCR test. And just even that, makes it feel quite professional you know they're ticking all the boxes i feel very safe um it's, it's, it's a level of high standards which is which is promising let's just hope the hair transplant itself is as good um we ended up picking up some other guy from the hospital who's also getting his hair done today called adam turkish guy it's always good when locals are also get, uh, going to the same company puts your mind at rest and um, but today tuesday breakfast i'm going to come down to the pool actually use the pool breakfast and then head into Istanbul to see see the city, see what it's like, go out for a nice meal and then get an early night for the big day tomorrow. And so far it's it's been pretty smooth. Everything that I arranged here was done through WhatsApp. Um, so literally I hadn't paid any money, I hadn't spoken to anyone on the phone, it was all done through WhatsApp, sent my photos of my hair, um, I sent pa my passport, my flight confirmation just so they knew I was coming. And that was it. Turned up at the airport, got a phone call saying your driver's outside. Boom, that was us. Taking straight here. Yeah, everything so far is fantastic. So it's Tuesday the 8th of November, 9.40pm in Istanbul. The last day, the last full day of here. Unless I, checking out, I got the text. I'm doing it early tomorrow morning, 7.30am. I'm getting collected, taken to now here time clinic for about 8am. And... I think just go from there. I'm not sure how long I'm going to be there for. Hopefully we'll be able to catch some of it on the vlog and I'll be updating the whole process, how it felt, prices, the recovery process afterwards and I'll probably vlog some bits of that. Um, but the, the biggest part of this vlog was the journey up until the hair transplant, the hair transplant itself and probably the first few weeks of recovery I will look at. But strangely, I don't know if it's because I've been taking minoxidil and finasteride for the last six weeks, but I feel as though my hair has thinned or maybe shed a lot recently in the last couple of weeks. So, perfect time to get the transplant. A little bit nervous. 
there's a lot of bald men uh, walking around that, um, walking around this hotel. So obviously the destination from from maybe a couple of clinics. Some of them look okay. Some of them look painful. Um, everyone looks like they've got nappies in the back backs of their heads. A couple of guys get their beards beards done, which looks pretty uncomfortable. So I'm glad it's just a head I'm getting done. Um, I'll show you, give you a little tour of the hotel as well, just so you can see what you're getting if you're someone who's considering coming over. But yeah, that's it. Final vlog before it all begins. The calm before the storm. And I'll give you one last little pull through of the hair. Let's see what we can see. So, temples are going to get done on both sides. Hopefully we can see this. Both temples, the front as well, strengthened up. I feel like it's this whole front section. And then the crown as well. So, see how it goes. Hopefully my hair grows in reasonably fast so I don't look completely bald for too long. But yeah, hopefully at least three or four months from now I start to see some good results. So I'm expecting November and December, January, February, I'm expecting March to see some good results. Wednesday, 7.22. Today is the day your transplant time. Getting collected in five minutes. Let's go. Hello. Sam? Vamos. Chivero. Building speed and recovery. Yeah, this is not the line itself, but like the border of how far below they can go. Mm -hmm. Time to get some new hair. Thank you. Perfect. Um, sorry to bother you, but uh, we can pick you up at 12.30 if you can get ready. Yes. So, here we are. Second day post-operation. Up was yesterday, got home at 5 p.m. and I did not feel like filming anything. As you can see, my head is quite swollen and sore. It's funny because I've seen a few guys in the hotel, not all of them have swelling, but of course, I am the one that ends up with swelling. So I want to give you a complete run through of yesterday, start to finish, whole procedure, um, the whole day. Today I'm getting picked up at 2pm to get this big fucking nappy off, um, maybe a wash, and then tomorrow I'm going to get washed and then Saturday I'm away home. <clears throat> so the reason I want to give you a little insight and in detail is because I know there's a lot of guys who are maybe considering the transplant route and during my research there was a lot of, a lot of stuff but um, not loads so this is going to add to the library for men who uh, are looking to get a transplant and are not sure what it's all about, how much it is, all that kind of stuff. But one thing I would say is the level of service that I've had here in Istanbul has been unbelievable. So, still not finished yet, but from the moment I got here, you've just been looked after. I'm getting messages constantly on WhatsApp asking me if I'm okay. It's, it's pretty special, I've not really experienced any kind of service like it. 
So yesterday I was, the day of the transplant, I was collected at 7.30am in one of these lovely big kind of Mercedes vans. Heated seats, perfect. We, we went straight to the Now Hair Time Clinic, which is where basically I paid, signed all my documents. It was fine because they sat me down. There was two other guys we picked up from the hotel, sat down, so there was three of us there. And you essentially have to fill out a kind of health declaration thing and then basically write that you accept your hair transplant and you accept your hair, which is pretty funny. <coughs> um, so after I signed that, I was taken through to the doctor's room. This guy, young guy, sitting at a big, large kind of wooden table and three or four of his sidekicks came in and essentially, and the translator as well, which was excellent. So there's loads of translators there for every, every, every single language, which is impressive. So well uh, ran operation. So an English translator came in with me and translated from the doctor basically asking what my expectations were, that sort of thing. So basically I asked for this region and this region and then to strengthen up the front region. And I also asked about my crown. Now, because I'm 25, the doctor basically said no to this. He said that the medical route, which I do take, I'm taking for asteroid and minoxidil, is better. And if I need another transplant down the line, go for it. Basically, there's not enough bald in there at all. A little bit of thinning, but no balding. I'm hoping the medication will strengthen that. It was a little bit disappointing, but these guys are literally bashing out 10 a day, hundreds a month, thousands a year, so they know what they're talking about, they know what they're doing. <coughs> and also the thing that kind of gave me confidence with that is the fact that every other clinic I've spoken to as well back home in the UK said they wouldn't have done my crown either, so that was good. Um, so basically they had a little play with my hair and we decided what areas were going to be done. And from there, you then get taken into the accountant room where you pay, you can pay with cash, you can pay with card, I paid with cards. And the total price of that was £2,750. And that includes my accommodation here. It also includes my breakfast and all my transportation. So it's, it's pretty good value for money. I had to pay a 3% commission because I was using my card, um, which was only like 82 quid or something or whatever 3% of 2750 is. So paid that and we then, what happened after that? I then went through to get the kind of black lines drawn on my head about where, kind of roughly where the, the transplant was going to happen. They took some pictures and then it was time for the dreaded shave. So got my buzz cut, bald head shaved off. That was probably the scariest moment for me. Um, all that coming off and I was pleasantly surprised with the bald head. I actually thought it looked okay. So. I've noticed it's a common thing as well, when any guy gets their head shaved, they're like, oh, it's not actually that bad. So, one thing I do think is that a bald man looks good. Man with hair looks very good. Balding man, not so good. And I was a balding man. So, um, it's been nice the last 24 hours not to look in the mirror and think, oh, I need to fix my hair. So then after the shave, they then got me in a little Now Hair Time kind of black poncho type thing and gave me a juice little photo shoot with that and then it was time, time to go to the hospital. So basically the clinic is in a separate location from the hospital. So they drive you all the way to the hospital with other bald men in the in the one car. And again, that kind of put my mind at ease that we were actually going to a hospital. I know some of the clinics back in the UK do it within the clinic. So it's nice to know that if anything goes wrong, you're, you're in good hands. So again, taken right in all the way up. Everyone's got their allocated rooms. There was like two or three doctors slash nurses slash hair specialists. Uh, again, the translators with you the full time. And to be honest, this was probably the only time I felt a little bit uncomfortable because the translator isn't with you the full time and the people in the, the kind of private room that you go into for yourself, they don't speak brilliant English. So they kind of just crack on with it and don't give you much warning about what's happening. But they, they, the, the whole thing was completely smooth. They knew what they were doing. The one thing I would say is the anaesthetic, is it local anaesthetic or, or general anaesthetic? Local. The local anaesthetic injections were fucking horrible. That was the worst bit of it. They put me in a hospital gown and they put an IV line in, gave me some painkillers and then started an antibiotic and a kind of drip thing. Um, that was all done before I could even ask what was going on. And I then lay face down, they shaved my head, the back of my head with a razor and then injected this anaesthetic which was fucking horrible uh, it's just like a really sharp pain you can kind of hear the liquid going in that was the worst bit for sure and then after that kicks in I actually can't feel a thing my, my head feels like a big concrete slab right now um, so then they basically plug 
they make little holes in the back of your head. This is what it felt like, so I couldn't actually see it, but they make little holes in the back of your head, and then they kind of, it felt like they were kind of like pulling the, the hair grafts out. And I got 3,000 hair grafts taken out. Uh, once that was done, I actually looked up a couple of times and it looked like they were butchering me, there was blood everywhere. Um, but I do think it's quite a superficial level of blood, you know, it's not deep cuts that they're making. So after the grafts were done, time for a break, so they cleaned me up, I got some lunch, just hospital food, pretty, pretty standard. And then it was time for part two. So this is now probably about two hours in from the minute I got to the hospital to, so now it's probably about two hours, it's about half twelve, I then sat down for the next part, which finished about half three, quarter to four. So in total, I was in there for, I would say, five to six hours. Um, so this, this was worse than, than the back injections. Your man started injecting, I'd say there was 10 in the back, 10 on the top. The 10 on the top were hot, like, disgusting, disgusting pain. It was, I was gripping my, my hand, and my eyes were watering, it was that kind of painful, but it is brief, it doesn't last long. Uh, and then once that's done again, everything goes numb. And then they started punching the holes again. And then after that, they implant the grafts. Now it took ages, I was really bored. You can't listen to music because, risk of infection, because my ear, ear pods are, are pretty minging. Um, and then after that, uh, another kind of hair specialist came in at the end of the FE thing and then did this kind of sapphire technique where they basically insert the hair straight away from the kind of little tool that they have rather than punch the holes and then put the hair in. After that, I was cleaned up, bandaged up with this big bad boy. And I was then taken into another room where I was given this goodie bag. <laughs> now hair time. And within this, I know, sorry, I'll sit back. My head's getting in the sun there, I need to stay out of the sun. So the, the best bit about this was this little document here. So this is basically things you should do after hair transplant operation and there's probably there's probably a list of about 20 things in here which was in a lot of depth and the second thing that was really good in here was the medications that they give you so there's loads of medications um, but basically I was only told to have two last night painkiller and an antibiotic today when I go back they're going to give me some more guidance on the other pills that I need to take I think there are some painkillers, some antibiotics that sort of thing and they only last maybe five or six days so out with that, they also gave me a neck pillow, which I have to sleep in, because for the first 10 nights, I think, 45 degrees angle. And they also gave me little kind of like, um, pads to cover up the, my pillows and, and the neck pillow, because you do get leakage. And when I woke up in the middle of last night, there was a lot of leakage, just like liquid from the anesthetic and a bit of blood, pretty rank. In fact, last night at dinner, I could feel it when I was eating my meal starting to dribble down the back of my neck, which was a bit off-putting, especially for the people that were sitting behind me. They also gave me some shampoo and stuff, which I think they'll explain to me today, uh, and that was it. I then got back in the taxi with an Australian guy who I hadn't seen before, and we got back to the hotel, and when I got back, pretty much just chilled for the evening, drank loads of water, got loads of water, went for dinner, pretty uncomfortable to be honest, the full thing. Um, for me though, the only thing that's really uncomfortable is just this, swelling on the forehead like I can't feel anything on the top of my head can't feel anything on the back of my head it's just like really tight here and I'm hoping it doesn't come down into my eyes because then I look like an absolute madman and that was it woke up this morning slept fairly well maybe like six seven hours woke up for an hour during the night just for the toilet and um, also because everything at the back was all wet just from the blood and stuff that had been leaking out and that was it so today I am getting the bandage removed, washed tomorrow, and then home. But yeah, top class service from now hair time. And this we will take off, and then you will do some spraying in order to dissolve the blood clots okay. in your head. The journey is coming to an end, the long awaited journey, the long process, over a year, maybe a year of planning it, two years of thinking about it, 
is coming to an end. I'm in Istanbul Airport waiting for my flight back to Edinburgh. I am on my fourth day post um, procedure and I'm starting to feel a bit better, back to myself again. Day, day of the op was fine because I was, my, my whole head was numb as anything. The only thing that was brutal was the needles. Um, they were the worst. I was, I was laughing because I was chatting to boys who had also had it done afterwards and they were saying that they could hear people screaming in the rooms next to them. Um, it is pretty painful. That was probably the worst part. After that, head's numb. The day after was also tough because the, the anaesthetic wears off, so your head's really sensitive. There's loads of leakage coming out, just like fluids from the anaesthetic and a bit of blood. It's pretty rank. And then on day, the day after that, I felt back to myself again. Well, almost back to myself, but then I got the bandages off and the wounds, or not the wounds, but the kind of areas that were done washed and they became really sensitive so it just stung and it looked kind of red raw now today four days after scabbing over starting to get kind of itchy which is good it means it's healing um swelling still there as you can see but i'm i'm happy so far with the result and i don't mind the bald head either so if none of it grows back um i'll still be a happy man because i probably just shaved my head um but yeah the whole experience from now here time was fantastic. Like from the minute I messaged them on WhatsApp until the minute they dropped me back here at the airport, couldn't have. There's no complaints at all. So yeah, delighted with the procedure, the process. Now I just have to wait six months, three, three months before I see any hair growth, six months before I see decent stuff, and then twelve months before I see full results to see if it was actually worth the whole thing. Would I recommend it right now? I wouldn't rush anyone into the process because it. It's a little bit more brutal than what I expected. Just with the pain and it's, it's, a, it's quite traumatic on your head, to be honest with you. I've been pretty exhausted, struggling to sleep, stinging. You look like an absolute tube as well. Um, the passport control guy, passport control guy in Istanbul gave me funny looks. But yeah, heading home. This will probably be the last vlog for a while. I'll give brief updates. I might do another YouTube video, I'm not sure. Just as things progress. But the main thing I wanted to show was the whole process, the whole journey, and just what it was like for me over the last kind of year or two. For now, the vlogs are done. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you took something from it. And stay tuned. Follow my Instagram or TikTok if you want to see more kind of daily updates. See ya.